Hello, everybody.、Um, welcome to the Science Tag Second Webinar: Using Solar Simulators for Academic and Industrial Research. My name is Xiao Xi, and I'm joined here today by my colleague Hiuni. Both of us are application scientists here at Science Tag. I hope you enjoy this webinar and find it helpful. So let's dive in. This webinar starts by introducing general specifications you'd consider before buying a solar simulator. Then we'll dive into the research applications that use solar simulators, which includes photovoltaics, dermatology, sunscreen testing, solar thermal technology, and photochemistry. So let's get started. Okay. Thank you very much, Xiaoxi, for that introduction. So, why is there a demand for solar simulators in research and material testing、uh, industries? It's because solar simulators provide an effective, repeatable, and controllable simulation of outdoor conditions in the lab. For example, solar simulators are often used to produce and test the performance of solar power plants and characterize efficiency of photovoltaic devices. Solar simulators can also be used to test various materials affected by continuous exposure to solar radiation, and solar simulators can simulate extraterrestrial conditions for space-related research.、Uh, in our first webinar, we explained that a solar simulator is essentially a light source with a broadband output and fluctuating stability similar to that of the sun. Selecting an appropriate light source is the first step in setting up a solar simulator.、Mm -hmm. We've listed here some popular lamp options. Short arc and long arc xenon lamps are the most popular light sources for solar simulators for two reasons. First, with a color temperature of 6,000 Kelvin and high output in both the infrared and visible ranges of the spectrum, they are a close spectral match for the sun. Second, xenon arc lamps are a bright point source and give off a high intensity light, which is important when collimated beam output is needed. Another possibility for solar simulators are QTH or quartz to sun halogen lamps. They produce a very steady beam output, strong infrared radiation, and are relatively inexpensive, which makes them popular light sources for infrared solar simulators. There are other light sources which can be used for solar simulation, such as metal-headed lamps, mercury xenon lamps, and LEDs. LED lights are a conventional source for solar simulators, but have many advantages.、Mm -hmm. First, LEDs emit a narrow monochromatic spectrum and are available in a wide range of wavelengths. This allows the LED lights themselves to match the spectrum of the sun by having different wavelength combinations, instead of relying on air mass filters to modify the spectral output as we do with conventional lamps. At around 50,000 hours, the life expectancy of LED lights is much longer than that of conventional lamps. And if you wish to select one or a range of wavelengths at the output, you would be able to control the wavelength selection through your computer. Right. So there are two main categories of solar simulators available on the market. First, we have the steady state, or what we call continuous solar simulators, which provide a steady beam of light on the target. Then we have flash solar simu simulators, which produces、uh, flashes or pulses of light. Both types can produce a wide range of collimation angles, wavelengths, and spectral uniformities. They can also both、uh, produce a variety of irradiation levels, or in other words,、uh, sun levels at the target.、Uh, one of the main differences between the two is that steady-state solar simulators generally use a continuous illumination source, such as a xenon or mercury xenon short arc lamp,、uh, with a constant current power supply. Then there's the flash solar simulator, which will use a heavy-duty xenon flash lamp with a flash power,、uh, power supply. Now, flash solar simulators can be used for a variety of different applications and testing purposes. They provide stable and repeatable flashes in varying pulse durations while ensuring sun's spectral distribution is met. And they're more affordable than steady-state solar simulators, especially when you're trying to illuminate a large target area. 
Since flash soil simulators use short pulses for illumination, they generally don't overheat testing specimens. A modification on this system, um, the highly uh, concentrated flash soil simulator, can be used to provide several hundreds of suns with each flash. Flash soil simulator can be used to test a variety of systems, such as photovoltaic devices, concentrated photovoltaic devices, and solar thermal power systems. Now, uh, steady state solar simulators are the more readily available solar simulator on the market. They are simple in design and can be used to test materials with longer response times. They are easy to assemble and maintain and can be produced in a variety of combinations of uh, spectrums, spatial non-uniformities, temporal stabilities and sun levels. All right. Another important factor to consider is how much collimation you would like for your system. Using lens or mirrors to achieve a collimated output will result in some light losses, unfortunately. However, lots of research requires a collimated beam output of various divergent angles. Space-related research requires the solar simulator's beam output accurately match the sun, which means the divergent angle of the collimated beam should be as small as possible. Another kind of research requiring beam collimation is concentrator photovoltaics, where researchers use solar simulators to focus sunlight on a small area. Mm -hmm. Beam collimation can be achieved by a collimation lens or mirror system, as shown on this slide. Having a collimated beam output allow, <coughs> allows one to test samples with various sizes without refocusing, as long as the sample size is smaller than the beam size. Another specification we need to address is the working distance of a solar simulator. Working distance is the distance between the last mechanical surface of the solar simulator to the target plane. It is worth noticing that the working distance of a solar simulator is factory preset. Usually it's important to consider all factors, including target size, beam collimation, and working distance when you're designing a custom project. The working distance that results will determine important factors of your system, like the numeric aperture of the lenses, or in other words, how fast we will need the lens to be in the system. Mm -hmm. Now next, uh, we want to talk about air mass filters. One of the key components in a solar simulator is the air mass filter, installed to mimic the solar spectral distribution. These filters are included with the light source of the solar simulator so that the xenon spectrum will be filtered and adjusted to produce a spectrum closely matching the sun. Now, different air mass filters can imitate the solar spectrum at various conditions on Earth and also provide extraterrestrial conditions as indicated in this table. Uh, for example, the AM0 air mass filter is used to mimic the solar spectrum in space while other air mass filters can be used to mimic the slight changes in the solar spectrum uh, that you'll see globally throughout um, low latitude regions like the equator or high latitude regions like uh, Canada. So now that we know the main specifications for solar simulators, let's tour the research and applications that use them. Solar simulators are a key component for photovoltaic testing. First, we would like to introduce the existing types of solar cells for those of you unfamiliar with the industry. Silicon has been the dominant material in photovoltaic industries. Electricity generates from the two layers of silicon configured in silicon solar cells, which are named P and N, and act as a diode in the cell. When a photon of sufficient energy heats the cell, electrons are excited from N and move to P to complete optical to electrical energy conversion. Mm -hmm. The second generation of solar cells involve thin film cells, which use direct gap material 100 times more light absorbent than silicon. Their absorbent layers are usually only 1 to 4 microns thick. With third generation, organic solar cells, absorbency is sacrificed for relative ease and low cost in manufacturing. Solar simulators have been essential at every step of our progress in new photovoltaic te technologies. One application for solar panels are in solar power assisted electrical vehicles. As of 2018, car pollutants has become a major environmental concern. 
When solar assisted vehicles, while、well, the car is still powered by conventional electricity, solar panels on top of the car may add hundreds of miles of power. Solar energy can be collected and converted into electrical energy by devices such as DC motors. While testing an individual cell on a car's solar panel is easy to do, there are options to perform large area solar simulation for the entire car in various intensities, spectral match classifications, and for different purposes.、Mm-hmm. Yes.、Uh, next up, we have concentrated photovoltaic systems. So, with concentrated photovoltaic systems,、uh, rather than producing a panel with solar cells covering a large surface area, we use inexpensive and easily available optical devices, such as lenses and mirrors, to concentrate light on to solar cells with a smaller、um, surface area but with high efficiency.、Uh, using optics, these systems can concentrate the normal sun value up to two thousand suns. Now, depending on the concentration process and the size of the surface area, there are a wide range of optical devices that can be used to concentrate the solar light onto these modules.、Uh, multiple layers of highly efficient solar cells are usually electrically interconnected in these uh, concentrated uh, photovoltaic systems,、uh, which can increase the solar cell efficiency by more than forty percent. The cell modules contain two different kinds of solar cells. There's high-efficiency silicon cells,、mm-hmm. and there's multi-junction photovoltaic cells.、Uh, one of the differences between high-efficiency cells and standard PV cells is that they're more sensitive to a wider spectrum of the incoming sunlight. For concentrated photovoltaic testing, we usually use highly accurate, highly collimated solar simulators with High spectral match and spatial uniformity. High collimation is important to test optical devices of these concentrated photovoltaic collectors. Now, if you want to test the efficiency of the cells themselves, highly concentrated solar simulators such as the flash concentrator、uh, that produces hundreds of suns can be used. Right. So up until now, we only discussed solar simulators for simulating terrestrial conditions.、Mm-hmm. For space-related projects, it is also vital to simulate the space environment at the testing stage. Besides vacuum and zero gravity, sun irradiation is another factor must be taken into consideration for energy and safety purposes. Solar simulators for space simulation usually require the output beam to be highly collimated with an intensity of one sun at AM zero, which is around 1367 watt per meter squared. These requirements are for two reasons. First, sun irradiation is a perfectly collimated beam with a collimation half angle of point around point twenty five degrees. Secondly, space related research considers receiving solar flux from a closer perspective, so the received intensity is higher. As an example of a previous project of ours, we built a highly collimated solar simulator for space related research. The end users' requirement were that they needed intensity of one sun at AM zero. The output beam should have a collimation half angle of 0.35 degrees, and they needed an attenuation of one versus a thousand of a sun. Besides this, the customer also wanted automated motion of the entire solar simulator in the x, y, z planes, as well as two axes of rotation.、Mm-hmm. A rack with five axes movement was built to satisfy this requirement. Now, on top right is the schematic figure of the rotations, and down on the left we can see the completed solar simulator.、Mm-hmm. Now, however, some space applications require a solar simulator to be used alongside or in a vacuum chamber that simulates extraterrestrial environments, such as this project here. We used a 6.5 kilowatt xenon arc in this project、um, as the source of the solar simulator.、Uh, the picture on the right side shows the homogenizing pipe we used to get a highly uniform、uh, output beam. The beam itself illuminated a one meter by one meter target area. The end users also wanted to closely simulate the sun conditions in space, and、um, they also wanted it to be situated close to the viewports of a vacuum chamber. Uh, this is in order to be able to shine the simulated sunlight into the vacuum. Okay. 
Now, next slide, uh, we would like to discuss about solar simulators used for testing materials that get particularly affected by radiation of the sun. Sunlight causes damage to plastics, textiles, paints, and other organic materials. Now, short wavelengths, uh, such as UV light, have been recognized as responsible for most of this damage. Not to mention heat degradation from infrared radiation is also a major cause of weathering of materials. Thicknesses, surface preparations, coating formulations, manufacturing techniques, etc. are critical determinants of uh, this material dur durability. So it is usually necessary to test these different elements before they're used. So we use solar simulators uh, to test the durability of these outdoor materials before certifying them for use. Now, solar simulators are also used to test accelerated weathering which produces the long-term effects of outdoor exposure in short periods of time. These tests are widely used for research and development, quality control, and material certification. They employ a variety of light sources to simulate sunlight and the damage caused by the sunlight. With the correct exposure times and irradiation levels, years of solar radiation exposure can be simulated within a few days. We normally use a soil simulator that will produce several suns of irradiation at the output to provide this accelerated effect. <clears throat> so um, besides material testing, another research area where solar simulator play a significant role is in dermatology and sunscreen testing. So before sunscreens appear on the store shelves for customers to purchase, sunscreen manufacturers must perform rigorous tests according to the guidelines of cosmetic standards. The test of how resistant a sunscreen is to the sun can be divided into two categories, the sun protection factor or SPF test and the broad spectrum protection test. The SPF test is usually in vivo and has the degree of protection against ultraviolet B or UVB, which ranges from 290 to 320 nanometers. UVB exposure to human skin can cause different levels of sunburn and lead to melanoma. However, ultraviolet A or UVA has also been identified to have long-term negative effects on skin such as premature aging. A broad spectrum protection test can be in vivo or in vitro to test the UVA protection ability of the sunscreen. Various cosmetic standards give the guidelines of how to perform these tests. Now, while ISO is the commonly used international standard for dermatological testing, there are other regional standards, such as the FDA in the United States and JCA in Japan, as listed in this page. <coughs> Here, um, we take an in vivo test described in ISO standard as an example. For spectral characteristics, it requires a solar simulator with xenon arc lamp with a spectrum from 290 to 400 nanometers. The total irradiance of the lamp should not exceed 1600 watt per meter squared, and during the test, the maximum irradiance should not cause any excessive heat or sensation on the irradiated skin area of the volunteer. The irradiation area should be at least 30 cm squared, within which there should be six slots. So four of the six slots can apply four different sunscreen products. The rest of the slots are used to apply reference screen and one remain unprotected. The test is done by first determining how long it takes to redden unprotected skin. Then sunscreen is applied on the measured out area on the skin and it is once more exposed to the solar simulator. Solar simulators are integral to other dermatological testing, such as sun-related skin allergy reaction testing and photosafety testing, such as photoactivated toxic materials testing. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, uh, we are going to talk about solar thermal technologies. Like concentrated photovoltaic systems, concentrated solar thermal technologies are also based on the use of optic systems to concentrate the solar radiation onto a small area. However, concentrated solar photovoltaics convert sunlight into electricity, while concentrated solar thermal power systems concentrate the sun energy to produce heat. 
Now, at the heart of all solar thermal power systems are two main components. There's the reflectors and then there's the receivers. Now, the reflectors are the mirrors which capture and focus the sunlight onto your receiver. In most types of systems, the receiver contains a heat transfer fluid which absorbs the heat and circulates to produce steam. The steam is then converted into mechanical energy in a turbine which powers the generator to produce electricity or is also directly used as heat. Most receivers are made up of layers and layers of absorbers that serve to absorb the incoming solar radiation and transform it into heat. Now regarding using solar simulators to test these power systems, uh, depending on the type of testing, the requirements for a solar simulator will also change. Researchers interested in testing the reflectors and thermal, thermal systems usually require a solar simulator that produces collimated output beams. But if you're conducting testing and researching on absorbing, absorbing efficiencies of the receiver, uh, then the most suitable solar simulator would be a high flux or a highly concentrated solar simulator that can produce dense intensities at the target. Now, these high flux solar simulators can offer a spectrum close to the sun and provide approximately high light fluxes to resemble a real concentrated solar system. Now, as a continuation from what we were discussing in the previous slide, Solar thermal collectors are used to collect solar energy as heat to create the desirable working temperatures and also pressure gradients in order to operate Stirling and Brayton engines. Now the work output of these engines is then used to drive a generator and create electricity at very low cost for mass consumption. On a more domestic level, heat collection from the sunlight can be used for day-to-day -day heating needs. Uh, so, <coughs> photochemistry is another research field that uses solar simulators. One area, indoor air quality analysis, has risen to people's attention as we spend more of our time indoors. Researchers want to mimic all sources of light shining on the air inside a room. As natural sunlight is a catalyst for photosensitive chemical reactions, it is important to apply a solar simulator outside the window of the room along with other indoor illuminators to find out the photoactivated pollutant to the quality of the air inside a room. A large area solar simulator or illuminator is required for this kind of research. It is also more important to have decent spectral match to the sun and stable output as the experiment could go on for several hours. It is complementary to have a rack that can alter the light source's illumination angle to more closely mimic the sun's irradiation throughout the day. However, if you are mimicking a focus beam on a small target, then a fiberized solar simulator is a good fit due to its flexibility um, its flexible direction of the beam output. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so lastly, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, thermochemical fuel production. Uh, thermochemical fuel production converts concentrated solar power into chemical fuels that can be stored and used. This is done by utilizing concentrated solar heat to drive chemical reactions so that water and carbon dioxide, for instance, react to produce hydrogen and oxygen. Now, thermochemical water splitting processes uh, use high temperature heat to drive a series of chemical reactions that produce hydrogen. The chemicals used in this process are reused within, the each, within each cycle, creating a sort of a closed loop that consumes only water and produces hydrogen and oxygen. So, in the figure on the bottom right corner, uh, we can see that the concentrated solar thermal energy is directed at a water and carbon dioxide containing reactor uh, where the water splitting process occurs. Hydrogen, carbon monoxide and oxygen are then produced, which can be further processed to make liquid fuels. Uh, just as with concentrated photovoltaic systems and also solar thermal power generation, this technology also concentrates the solar energy with the use of mirrors or lenses. So on the top right hand corner, 
you can see two different solar thermal concentration systems. Uh, one contains flat mirrors called heliostats directing the solar energy to a reactor. Uh, we can also use parabolic mirror concentrators to focus the solar energy to a reactor. Solar simulators are used to test the performance of these solar concentrating mirrors or parabolic, par parabolic dishes. Um, they're also used to test the receivers and reactors that collect the concentrated power. Uh, so as a final remark about this solar related applications, thermochemical fuel production has been in the news recently as a major green energy solution and it, it is considered as an excellent alternative to fossil fuels. All right. Thank you, Hirini, for the summarization of uh, solar-driven alternative fuel. Mm -hmm. Now we have come to the end of the webinar. If you have any questions about the contents discussed during this presentation, do feel free to contact us. So um, our next webinar is going to be about tunable light sources, which is essentially a light source and a monochromator. We will send you an email about the detail. Um, now is the question and answer session. If you have questions, you can stay around and speak with us now.